Well, this is different. I've got here with me Rich Grisham, former host of this very podcast, and TJ Lowerman, frequent panelist on this very podcast. They're here in a much different capacity in this episode, however, and that's because the Out of the Park Baseball Sim Management Series is going into its 17th year of release and the mobile version, its 6th edition, and they're here representing Out of the Park Developments to talk about everything to expect with the upcoming game. Rich, welcome back. How does it feel to be on the other side of the Press Row podcast? You know, I got to admit, Brian, I'm a little um, a little miffed about what you've done with the place. Like, mm -hmm. it's one thing to move furniture around. It's another thing to literally throw everything of mine in the trash and not even take the trash out. You just let me stare at all of my old stuff, my pictures, my posters, just thrown away. And, and, and it's, it's kind of disconcerting. I'm a little upset by that. But other than that, it's good to be back. <laughs> you learned my true feelings about you that I never, <laughs> I never vocalized, Rich. I never vocalized. Then you left. And I just scrapped everything that had your name on it. I mean, wow, that was harsh. That yeah. was harsh. Yeah. I, well, you know, I'm just doing my job here now. Um, <laughs> See, this is fun. I'm excited. This is really cool. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah, anytime. And TJ, you're always around on the show. You're comfortable here. But how have you been doing lately as well? I mean, it feels like we've just talked maybe a couple days ago. We did a few days ago, right? Uh, yeah, things have been good. Kids been throwing up a little bit. I had a big duty in his pants earlier. Mm -hmm. But uh, other than that, it's been good. Yeah, that's uh, that's the life for you now. <laughs> um, so, all right, we're going to talk about Isle of Park Baseball 17 uh, coming out later this month. And first, though, I'm curious because we just established you came from Press Row Podcast, hit the pass, Rich, with me. Yeah. So how did you end up working with Out of the Park Developments now? Well, um, Brad Cook, who was the, the, you know, the PR guy for a number of years, uh, who we had on the Press Row podcast and the, the Hangouts multiple times, you know, talking about out-of-the-park baseball earlier versions, um, he reached out to me, uh, I don't know, early December saying, hey, I've got a, a new opportunity that's going to prevent me from spending the amount of time that I would like to uh, working with these guys and just interested if um, – you know, you'd be interested in doing something like that. And I thought about it and, and, um, you know, you and I and TJ and Owen and Kat and Chris and we've all, and submit, you know, we've all talked for, you know, years about, you know, if I was doing this, this is what I would do. And can you believe that they said that, or did anybody think about this before it went out? Like all those kind of conversations, I thought to myself, how cool would it be if I could sort of put my money where my mouth is and, and, you know, and, and, and take that leap, you know, and just sort of move from one side of the aisle to the other. And, um, you know, it's not, I can't say it's something that I've always wanted to do, but certainly when an opportunity presents itself to you, um, the more I thought about it, the more I thought to myself, well, you know, this is, this is not a fly by night organization, right? These guys have been making this game for years. This is the 17th version of it. Uh, they have a really good product and they have a really dedicated community. So, you know, if I can bring some of my friends along, um, I'm interested. I, you know, I don't have the capacity or the wherewithal to do this whole thing myself. So after I had some conversations with the guys that run out of the park and I sort of, I, I, I said, look, I've got an idea on how we can bring a few uh, folks, you know, to the table and we can really make this a team effort. Um, they sort of like the idea and, uh, and here we are. So it's 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 been a really wild, entertaining, fun ride so far, and we're just getting started. And it's kind of a challenging game, right, Rich, uh, to promote because you don't have the, uh, as far as like console games that are very active playing. Uh, you have the graphics that can, you can run videos of all the time. This is a it's a more challenging game probably to explain to consumers and, and then to market to them, right? Totally, um, and that's why. That's why I was so happy that, that it is such a good game because it's a lot easier. Well, easier is the right word. You feel better about taking that kind of a making that kind of a move when you know that you're at least dealing with a game or a product, in this case a game, that is really good and that does have a long history and does have a dedicated community. You know, this if it were a brand new venture um, in this space, I, I can't imagine doing it. Um, 
So, yeah, it's definitely not MLB the show, right? It's not Madden. It's not a stick skills kind of a game. It's a thinking person's game. But one of the things that I've learned is there's a lot of different kinds of ways to play the game and a really very different group of people that play it in very different ways. So the challenge is more around generating awareness to the people who don't know about it. Cause, and and I'm, I know TJ has some thoughts on this. For the most part, you know, nothing is universal. The people who play this game really like it. Um, so the challenge, like you said, Brian, is like, okay, how do we tap into the people that already know about the game and love it? How do we tap in to that same feeling and, and spread the word? And TJ, who does a great job doing the weekly Sims, you know, he's got a bigger challenge than I do because he's got a, excuse me, the weekly Twitch streams. He's got to, you know, stream the game for an hour and have conversations and stuff like that. So um, TJ, you know, I would also pose that question to you as well. Yeah, like you said, Rich, uh, you know, the games that we play on our consoles, we just go on, we take the normal season, we go, we play it, and we're happy. Uh, the hardcore community that has you know, grown with out of the park baseball, they're doing things like you have, there's a ton of people that like to go back to the beginning of baseball, start from there with the 1919 rosters yeah, and, and play it out and see what happens. <laughs> then there's people that like to go and just make all fake teams. Yes. And see what happens. And, and like, guys, when you say fake teams, like teams from like literally other planets, <laughs> they build these entire <laughs> lures around the stuff it's amazing yeah, and then there's others that are like all right it's 2016 i'm gonna hit start i'm gonna sim 100 years into the future and then i'm gonna start playing uh, so there's just like a vast group of people trying out all sorts of crazy things trying to break the game building stadiums with 700 foot walls oh that was <laughs> so great oh my gosh yeah just the possibilities are endless and people are literally going out there and trying to find all the possibilities. And that's, you know, that's the other interesting challenge, right? And is that, okay, not only is it a game that, you know, you can't in 20 seconds do an elevator pitch to somebody and get them excited, or you can, but it's a challenge to, sure. like what TJ said, the other thing is there, you know, people do things with this game that there, there's so many different options and, and ways to play it and even ways to play it and then layers below that. Um, just as an example, right? Like, let's say I pick a team and I go back to 1950 and take the Brooklyn Dodgers. You can move forward through time and you can have the game. Basically, when different things happen in real life, they'll happen in the game. So expansion will happen and the real new young players will pop into the game in the right year. Or you can just have the game not do any of that stuff and it can become this completely fictionalized world where you can keep all of the you know just the american league and the national league the same and just again there's so many little nuances to it it, it becomes a challenge but it's fun to figure all this stuff out the, that that's the really interesting thing is you know and nerve-wracking right like <laughs> how how do we tell people that have no idea about this game how do you distill all of the cool things into something that makes sense and doesn't just overwhelm people with with you know so much information. Okay, yeah, so the the real elevator pitch is: mm -hmm. Do you want to be a baseball general manager at any point in history, on this world or another? <laughs> That's great. It's a great I slogan for next year. It is. Yeah. Um, so how about you know set it up for me, Rich, as far as just the basics of the game? You know, for somebody who's maybe not familiar with out of the park baseball, uh, what is you, you mentioned a few of the different ways people are playing and tinkering with the game and everything, but what's the, the general like goal, just the basic goal of the game, and, and then maybe expand on then some of the different ways people tend to play it and what are some of the primary features that people use? Sure. Well, the basic goal is to really just inhabit the role of a general manager um, and or the manager of a baseball team. Whether that is a real major league team with the real major league players in the year 2016, and when I say inhabit the role, I mean you build, you know, you have your team. You can do the things that you can do in a lot of games, right? You can make trades, you can sign free agents, you can scout, you know, you can set your lineups versus lefties and righties, and and then you can get to individual games and manage the games themselves as far as how you want to strategize it. 
you can play every single game of an entire year and just try to sort of focus on that. Um, or, and you know, there's a lot of ors, where you can sort of take that and then you can blow it out over the course of many years and really sort of focus instead of not necessarily just on a single game trying to win the World Series one year into really sort of, okay, how do I, you know, if I truly were a general manager, what would the effect of the way that I want to run a team really look like over the course of a five years or 10 years or 15 years? And and you can really get very distinct with the kinds of strategies that one, that you want to use for Again, scouting and drafting, how long you want to keep a pitcher, let him develop, uh, you know, analyze the different strengths and weaknesses of players. You've got the the fog of war, you know, that you have in the real world where, you know, you don't know necessarily what this player is going to do and dealing with injuries and, and all those things. So it's really inhabiting the world of a general manager. And the twist to that is that could be somebody today – with a real Major League Baseball team, with real Major League Baseball players, or any time throughout the history of the game, starting in the late 1800s. So that, I mean, that's that's the core thing that you're getting into. And if you like baseball, and if you like statistics, and if you like strategy, that's the three pillars of the game, in my opinion. And TJ, I'm sure you have some more that you can add to that. Yeah, definitely agree. Uh, like one of the things I'm doing this year is I've noticed the last couple of years, the Braves in real life have just been trading away everybody. They're getting ready for their new stadium. I think it's either next year or the year after. You seem pleased by that, by the way. Love Twitter. it so much. <laughs> Let's just trade everybody that's ever had a name, which is funny because uh, I like to rag on the Phillies and the Mets, but specifically the Phillies who do the exact opposite where they find the big name guy, pay him for way too much when he's not even good anymore. Uh, the Braves are just trading everybody away before they get into that prime of their career. Uh, so I've got a blackboard out right now. Uh, I'm kind of determining who's going to be my team in like 2018 when I think I'm going to be able to make a push for the World Series. Uh, I'm checking out potential numbers, doing the 20 to 80 scouting ratings. Uh, I'm kind of losing my mind because I need a third baseman. I don't know what to do. Uh, but yeah, I could do that with the 2016 Braves going forward. I could go back to any other year i could do that with the are they the nexon eagles in japan i feel like i'm mixing korea and japan yeah uh, and <laughs> yeah and there's and again it's it's like every time i say something i'm like oh yeah i want to remember that like it's not just the major leagues it's also a bunch of international leagues because there is this is a global game right and yep. and we we sometimes lose um, that perspective, particularly when you're talking about what we typically talk about, which are console game, you know, Madden and FIFA is obviously global, but, you know, Madden and NHL and MLB, the show, right? Mm -hmm. There are international leagues. Uh, you got Japanese leagues and Caribbean leagues and, and all sorts of other ones. And, and when I say the leagues, like not just names of leagues, like there are people who work for the game who spend a tremendous amount of time getting that information right. Uh, there's an article coming out on Polygon this week from our friend Owen Good, who spent several hours overall talking with a couple of the guys who have been working on one particular new feature this year, which is getting authentic minor league rosters over the course of decades and decades right. You know, and, and you guys, obviously, Brian, you know Owen. He, he, he's got a bunch of interest in minor league baseball. Historical minor league baseball is one of them. He knows a few players. He wrote an article in Sports Illustrated about like the last 30 game winner. And he's, he's hit pounding TJ with, well, is this guy in the game? And is this guy in the game? And what, what team is he on and stuff? And, and, and that led to this, the article that he's going to be writing um, coming out the Sunday after the show goes on about that too. So again, just the, the more you get into it, the more expansive it becomes what, and and while some people, that's overwhelming. Like it's almost paralyzing. Oh my gosh, there's so much to do. I don't know where to start. On the other hand, you can really just sort of pick something that you're interested in and go deeper and wider in that kind of thing than you've probably ever been able to do in any kind of baseball game. Yeah, and that's like it. yeah, and that's kind of where I wanted to go uh, to TJ on. Um, you know, what would you recommend, TJ, for somebody who's just starting up the game or isn't as familiar with it? 
how would you suggest that they play the game? Because you guys have listed off a million different ways to play the game from from kind of like the standard management to just getting a little more way, way deeper and a little more bizarre. Um, but like as far as something that's a little more simplified, because I know you can automate a lot of stuff too. Uh, but what would you suggest? Like first time into the game, you get in there. Should you, ju- should you just take over management of one MLB team and take it from there? Or what, what do you think is the best way to kind of get, get a feel for the game when you get into it? Yeah, uh, we have some like quick start options. Uh, so you can tw- you can do actually a season of like all of the all time best team best players from a certain team and have a league that goes through that. Uh, again, you can just do the standard 2016 season, or what I would recommend for everybody because most people our age remember it. Uh, we have it where you can just go in and start 1994 and play out that season and see what would have happened. Yes. Uh, somehow, Frank Thomas is always winning the Triple Crown. Hits about 66 home runs. <laughs> He's a monster. Uh, but yeah, even if you just go in, play 1994, and you'd be like, this is what could have happened. Do that. Play out that year. Then you maybe go in, jump into a standard game with 2016 seasons and stuff. And I think you'll uh, have a good little time doing that. You know, another interesting thing, and it depends upon the type of fan that you are, too. But the first time that I, you know, because I had dabbled in out of the park, but I never really spent a lot of time in it until I took this job. And when I got my copy of Out of the Park 16, what I did was I started playing a season with my all time favorite team, which is the 1986 Mets. So I know that team very well. I like literally grew up with that team. And so by knowing the players, that really, that sort of eliminated that first level of unfamiliarity with, oh my gosh, I got a team. I got to study the team. I got to know who's doing what. Like, I know the players. I know the lineup. I know Wally Backman and Tim Tuffle platoon. I know Rick Aguilera is a, you know, a long reliever. I know, you know, Jesse Roscoe. Like, so I just started playing it and then played a few games and then I simmed a few weeks and then I had some injuries. So another way to do it is take one of your all time favorite teams and go back to that season and just start the season so that you can have the familiarity of knowing a particular team really well. And then you can sort of learn what the game offers you. And, you know, some some people really like to have you know, day to day, really manage all of the different, you know, tiny aspects from, you know, the ballpark management aspect and the finance aspect management of it. And some people just want to say, okay, well, if I made two or three of these big trades, what would happen? So even once you start doing that, then you start to look at the different ways and you sort of can have the experience reveal itself to you. So that that's another sort of potential option that you might want to check out. Yeah. So 17 years now, it's pretty amazing because we don't have many sports games that have that have not been canceled by this point that began that long ago uh, that are still around there. Uh, yeah. So many have been canceled now and and out of the park has been, you know, it's been there on PC and it, it's chugged mm-hmm. away and it's 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 kind of had its niche. And um, but, you know, what you know, first of all, what is it that that has allowed it to kind of sustain over the years? Do you think is it that you mentioned the um the fan base is is pretty really dedicated to the game and and really supportive of the game. It, do you put it on them? Do you think it's really about uh, that fan base of the game, or is there is there more to it? Do you think than that? Yeah, the fan base, I think, is like the number one pillar for this game. Uh, so like, I'll hop on the forums and I'll be like, oh, let me go. Here's a question. Let me go answer that. There's already seven people in the last ten minutes that have already answered this question. I'm like. I'm literally blown away every time like a question pops up on the forums or on a Reddit post or something. These people know this game inside and out. Can I make a guess too, TJ? I sure. bet you it's mostly positivity, right? Unlike most other video games. Yeah, except for Reddit. Yeah, yeah everybody's uh, super positive. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, Reddit, you know, that'll you find negativity on anything there. Um, <laughs> So let, let's just let's go ahead and get into some of the new stuff for uh, for Out of Park 17. We we've run through kind of the basics of the game, but you know there's a lot of new stuff that's coming to the series this year, and some pretty major stuff. And and the first was last year with uh, with Out of the Park 16, uh, the MLB.com license was added, which meant teams, uh, real teams, their logos, real stadiums. 
Um, so that was a big, big step forward for the series. And now this year, it's got the MLBPA license. Now, the series has always had the names of players, but MLBPA license brings you more than that. Rich, can you explain what this actually means for Out of the Park? Well, I mean, it, the number one thing is authenticity, right? It's you're, you're able to see the likeness of the player, uh, not just a shadow, you know, a silhouette, and you don't have to go to the very vibrant, I might add, mod community, right? It's just in the game, the real players, their face-gen images. And it's interesting because we we could have gotten the actual photographs of the players, but because, you know, you can sim, you know, 10, 20, 30, slash 100 years into the future, using face gen lets the players age and we can also have their emotional state sort of displayed. So yeah, that's what the MLBPA license, it legitimizes the players, gives you the, uh, you know, gives you the ability to, you know, officially use their, uh, license, uh, excuse me, use their likeness as well. So that, that's the, the core of it. Um, you know, and to some people it's no big deal and to other people it's a huge deal. Right. So that's, that's, uh, that's what the, that's pretty much all well, about. Go into the face gen a little more, Rich, because this is one of the most intriguing things I think about the game this year. So what it does, and in fact, TJ's seen it in action more than I have, but it really just sort of it. It's the technology is really impressive. How you know, if you look at some of the screenshots that uh, we've been able to, to put out there, it's really kind of cool how it it doesn't look silly. Like it looks really. Uh, really good, and like I said, you can sort of when a player's ticked off, you know, he'll he'll be you know frowning at you. When he's really happy, he'll have a nice smile. If he gets traded, you know, you don't have that photoshopped look of like the slightly weird um, hat and the slightly weird jersey. Like that'll just naturally be be there. So you know, it's really cool technology, and it allows us to do some, frankly, some kind of fun little things with it that we wouldn't otherwise. And, and like I said, TJ, you've been you've been seeing it a little more um, up close and personal, even yeah. lately, especially than I have. Yeah, TJ, do you have an example of uh, maybe when you identified some of that emotion in a face gen um, and what it meant to you? Uh, no, I did look at Pablo Sandoval and think, man. That looks like a panda and a man that looks like <laughs> Pablo Sandoval. Uh-huh. Uh huh. But not the emotion. I haven't I haven't dug too much into that yet. Uh, but yeah, like Rich said, it just we could have just put pictures in there, and then you could look at Bryce Harper in 2019, and he's on the on the Yankees, and you're like, well, he's wearing a Washington Nationals hat. Well, now he's fixed. He's got his Yankee hat on. You're gonna see a little more scruff in his older age. Yeah. Uh, it just. It just gives you a lot more than you can do with just like a regular picture. And when you look at these players, you know, you aren't really like, oh, that doesn't look like him. You're like, oh, no, that that looks like Pablo Sandoval and that looks like Bryce Harper. But yeah, and you just get that ex- those extra bits that you can do using that technology rather than just a static picture. Well, yeah, I think it's especially important that it's uh, it's giving you some information, some something to go, some data essentially to go off of because this game is built off of it's all about numbers essentially, right? As far as ratings and statistics and everything. So you need some kind of feedback to act on a little more than just looking at numbers, right? And isn't that kind of the idea behind this as far as seeing in their face how their emotional state and how happy or, or dissatisfied they are. Oh yeah, I mean it's it's you know th- there's a lot of information being thrown at you in this game. You know, like there's a lot of information. You know, it's like a baseball card times twenty. You know, when you look at a player, right? So just that quick sort of oh, right. D- just being able to see that quick look just gives you to me a really cool you know, interesting way to just gauge what, what you've got. You still might dig into what his OPS is and what his total potential might be and, you know, what he's hitting in this situation and, and what his attributes are in that. But, you know, when you pull up his card, you just see his face you're like, oh, that's cool. You know, just it's that little bit. But, you know, you know, Brian, when it comes to the user interface of any system, every little bit that you do to improve it adds up to a much better experience. And I really think this is, this will, like the first time that I saw those images, right, of, of what it looked like with the player cards in there, I was like, wow, that's really cool. And and that's been the, the 
you know, the, the feedback so far and what we think is going to happen with everybody. So just be like, wow, this is one of those things that I didn't really think that I was, was going to matter. But now seeing it, I get it. It's really cool. Yeah. So additionally, isn't there there's some sort of um, uh, player icon right during games now because of the MLBPA license as far as like on the base paths and everything? Well, that doesn't have to do with the license. That is something yeah. that has been asked for forever, right? Mm-hmm. It's, it's um, you know, once they introduced the 3D stadiums a couple, two or three years ago, and it went from being a very flat sort of experience to where, okay, now the stadium looks really cool, but, you know, when I'm playing the game, there's nothing really happening on the field. You know, it takes a lot, and this is one of the things, like, you know, people, and I, I look at the comments, and, and, and I realize, you know, and, and I am was the same way. Well, you know, did they ever think about having the players move around on the field so that you could see it? And, you know, what I've learned, and TJ, you've, you've talked with Matt Arnold, who's one of the main developers on it, it takes a tremendous amount of processing power to move, you know, to have, you know, motion of players moving around the field when at the same time you've got all of the, you know, this, this is a, the engine running this game is really complex and takes up a lot of computing power in and of itself. So um, that doesn't have anything to do with the license. That's just mm-hmm. one of those things that the team has known forever and the community has wanted forever to give you a little bit more of a sense of what's happening on the field instead of just looking at the, you know, what the announcer is saying to see what the, what, what the players you know, to, mm-hmm. to see some sort of simple movement, uh, you know, around the diamond so you have an idea what the situation is. Yeah. So the historical minor leagues, TJ, explain everything that's gone into this. What what can we expect from the historical minor leagues? You guys mentioned it a little earlier, but it's just, it's kind of mind-blowing. So I'd like to hear just what that means for the game. Yeah, pretty much uh, anybody that has ever been in the minor leagues attached to a major league team uh, is going to be in this game. Uh, I think we tout a hundred thousand oh. real players. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> the real yeah. numbers. It's more, more right? Than that. Yeah, actually, oh. yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, uh, if you want to look for, say, some guy that used to play shortstop in the Rockies organization that decided to quit playing baseball, take up some other sport, maybe win a Super Bowl as a quarterback, <laughs> uh, he's there. Some guy played. Uh, with the Toon Squad against the Monstars when he quit playing basketball and he wanted to come play baseball for a little bit, he's in there. Question for uh, you, TJ. Is yeah. is Russell Wilson on, on the Rangers minor leagues last year? Uh, I don't believe so because that was just spring training. Oh. It wasn't, he wasn't like a real yeah, thing. That makes sense. Uh, it but was he kind is, of just a, uh, a PR thing, but yeah. Yeah, also Garth Brooks is not in the game. Uh, <laughs> what about Will Ferrell? <laughs> I don't believe Will Ferrell's in the game. Oh, come and on. I, you got to get I him in. Look. <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, you'll find Russell Wilson back when he was on the Rockies. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Uh, you'll find Michael Jordan and his Birmingham Barons uh, time. Uh, right. though, I think I'm going to tell them to update something because they have him at like, on a scale of 0 to 200, they have him as like a 38 teammate. It's Michael Jordan. He should be like a 200, right? Wow. <laughs> the scale <laughs> yeah, goes to 200, by the way? <laughs> uh, for some of those things like, yeah. uh, like teammate goodness mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Wow. Yeah, like John Elway in there too. Yeah. Wow, it's going to be uh, interesting you know, to see, you know, all these people discovered in, in the game. Just trying to even think about it, uh, I, I don't even know how to process that with with so yeah. many players and so many that never made it to the majors. So you don't yeah. you don't know who has interest in what player from the minor leagues, from what year, from what team. Uh, th- that's got to just be kind of a, a fascinating thing for people to dig through, especially people who are really into baseball and, and really love the sport. Yeah, and like you know, I mentioned earlier, Owen Good, um, our friend who's writing something for Polygon, you know, interviewed the two guys who spend a tremendous amount of time researching this information and, and getting it in there. You know, he brought up that uh, the the Sports Illustrated article, the last thirty one game winner, and TJ, that guy is in the game, right? The one that Owen yep. wrote about. Yeah, yep, he's in there. Uh, so, Steve Dalkowski, yeah. who supposedly threw one hundred and twenty miles an hour. <laughs> Uh, before radar guns were there, Ted Williams said it was the fastest guy he'd ever faced. Mm. Uh, he's in there, wow. you know. And then you've also got like other opportunities to create like what if stuff, right? So, for example, I just finished the book about Satchel Page a couple months ago. Yeah. You know, in Satchel Page, many people regard Satchel Page as the best pitcher ever. Like when he and Bob Feller were. 
both pitching at the same time and Bob Feller in the majors and Satchel Page in the Negro Leagues, like they would barnstorm, you know, together and pitch against each other. And Satchel Page quite often got the best of Bob Feller. And Feller at that time was, you know, the best pitcher in the game. You can even create all sorts of interesting what if scenarios around things like that, too, right? So if you like history, you know, you can take Josh Gibson and Satchel Page and um, you know, some of those amazing, you know, uh, Negro leaguers who were, you know, not allowed to play Major League Baseball and mm-hmm. place them into, um, you know, the Major Leagues or other sort of, you know, fantasy scenarios and play them out over the course of multiple years and 162 game seasons and stuff, too. So even from that angle, there's all sorts of interesting stuff that you can do. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty amazing the, the way that the past and the history of the sport is celebrated in this game. And that leads me to the next kind of huge addition to, to this game, and that's the historical exhibition mode where you can set up a game or a series matching up any two teams from history, not just oh, yeah. the, the same year. You don't have to rig the, the game up to try and do something like this. You can actually just pull them out, right? Yeah, this is my personal favorite. I mean, we've talked about it on Press Row for years. I just, baseball... Uh, of all video games, of all sports that are in video games, baseball has the most to offer from a history perspective because its history is so rich um, and controversial and yeah. interesting. And not only is the historical exhibition mode a new feature in the game, which allows you to pick any team from any time and pit them against any other team from any other time, in a single game or in a series and in a series not just okay game one game two game three but played and managed as a series right where you have fatigue and and the manager in an elimination game will manage the game differently than if it's game one or game two or something like that so that's all um you know that's all part of it but also the fact that you can normalize the teams so that you basically pick an era. Let's say you take the 1927 Yankees and TJ's uh, 1996 you know, Braves, for example, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Those, let's go with 95 when they actually won, not 96. Okay. Of Yankees, sir. 95, that's fine, right? <laughs> so those two teams playing, you know, what, 70 years apart or something like that? Mm. So the numbers may or may not feel the same, but they played in very different eras. Sure. So yeah. you can say, okay, well, we're going to play these two teams, but we're going to play in era X, like the golden era of, you know, the 20s and 30s, or, you know, the defensive era of the 80s, or, you know, the offensive explosion of the late 90s. You sort of pick a year and an era, mm. and it will not dramatically, but it will impact sort of the player ratings underneath the covers to normalize it so that the two teams are playing on a even keel based upon whatever era you want them to be in. So, like, all of those combinations of nuances, to me, just make this so cool. And as a history nerd and a baseball history guy, I'm just all over this. It opens up so many cool options that we will absolutely be exploring, you know, uh, officially uh, with some cool announcements coming later on um, all about this. Because this is, to me, just... When when I I was begging, um, you know, Marcus Heinsohn, he's the CEO. Like as soon, even before I took the gig, I was like begging for something like this. And the fact that it got in for this year is no small feat. It took a tremendous amount of time and effort. And this is a this is a really small team. Like when I say a small team, the actual number of people programming this game is like less than four, right? Mm-hmm. Which is really unbelievable now other other people affiliated with it to like help with ratings and roster management and stuff like that but the people actually writing code is very small so they have to be extremely careful with what they choose to invest in because you know it's it's a small number of people things that you build could break other things so the fact they got it in and it works and it works so well Oh, I'm just so happy about this mode because I think so many people are going to have so much fun with it. TJ, what was your kind of fi- uh, your your fantasy matchup for that the first time you decided to uh, try it out? Well, I just ran it right now uh, oh. with the '86 Mets losing to the Atlanta Braves of 1995. Oh, rich. Uh, that is one. impossible, <laughs> impossible. But literally, that took from the time Rich said it to I just telling you the answer. Well, actually, earning you the answer for a, couple, a little bit, but. 
But yeah, it's <laughs> you can do it super quick just like that. Or you could go in and literally just play every single game of that series if you wanted to. Yeah. That sounds uh, pretty amazing. Yeah, but matching up the 27 Yankees against anybody is usually fun. I think the first one I actually did uh, in the beta was the 27 Yankees and the 04 Red Sox, I think it was. Two good teams. Yeah. <laughs> What's funny is you can also take, like, you know, the uh, you know 1993 Brewers, <laughs> right, against the, uh, hmm. you know, 1987 Expos. Like, you know, it doesn't have to be the all-time greatest teams. It could literally be any team from any year ever going against any other team from any other so what year you're saying, ever. So what you're saying is I could take the 116-win Seattle Mariners and have them continue to fail in the postseason. <laughs> <laughs> or you could take that Tragic. team a different mode. You could pick that team <laughs> right back up, and you can manage them properly to win the World Series. Oh. Should have done that year. Well, what they should have done was at the trade deadline do something. Because I, I was sitting at a game that year, and I told my brothers it was right before the trade deadline, and I said if they don't make, if they don't do something, they're they're not going to win in the postseason. And then look what happened. Make they, it they happen. Were built for the regular season. And I guess now I could go back and actually That's fix right. them. <laughs> You're right, 100. percent Yeah. Um, we've we've gone over a lot to do with this game, and there's so much in it and and we mentioned it's a little overwhelming maybe for for newcomers and everything is there anything new this year rich that that or 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 tj that might make it a little easier on people who are new i i I think you mentioned different ways to play like the a way to kind of focus in on it or even just start with the the historical exhibition mode but i wonder just getting settled in is there anything new as far as getting settled in well i'll tell you one thing you know another reason that i'm so happy that i was able to bring several people on the team Mm -hmm. starting with tj like literally once i had the opportunity to do this i'm like okay well the first person that i want to get on the team is tj because number one he's a baseball guy number two he's perfect for the role of being a community manager he's so good just he's, he's perfect for this but also because now that we've got two or three or four people, you know, depending upon the day of the week, you know, one of the reasons there aren't tutorials in the game is because, you know, they really, the, the, it just takes time and effort to do that, and they've never had that. So I couldn't imagine a tutorial in this game being fun either. Right. And yeah. so what people we're, don't do, people don't play tutorials in the regular games. Exactly. In the console exactly. games, yeah. And it's baseball, right? I mean... Do you teach people how to play the game of baseball? No. Chances are, mm-hmm. if they're getting this game, they they understand baseball. So it's like, okay, well, tutorial how to teach them how to play the game. So one of the things that we'll be doing over the course of you know when it launches and over the course of the spring and the summer is we'll just be creating a bunch of YouTube videos. Here's you know here's a few interesting ways to get started in the game, and then we'll do some some deeper dives on here's what the user interface really means. And we're going to be you know TJ does an amazing job with the streams every Wednesday at nine Eastern, just doing interesting stuff, playing games, talking with people about the game, and you know he'll will be basically just much more not in the game but around the game with the community with what TJ is doing, just creating things that will people should be able to very easily find um, that will help them get started because there's a lot of people that are new to this game and uh, getting started and understanding what to do and how to do it is a big deal. And it's a lot, I think, the personally, the smartest way to do it, I think, is to have people like TJ and Corey Andrus, who's also on the team, mm-hmm. um, you know, and Brad Cook, you know, the, the he's also still on the team, just not, you know, full time. Um, come up with you know interesting blog posts and YouTube videos and during the live streams come up with those kind of things that'll help people and that'll be community driven right you know I invite anybody who's listening to this and and who's interested in it you know hit TJ and me and Corey and Brad up on Twitter or you know in the forums and say hey you know what do you think about this and and during the next live stream TJ will walk through it and there'll be YouTube videos and all all kinds of stuff I mean to me that's the right way to do it because it gives you a lot more flexibility and and a lot more sort of direct interaction with people who are interested in it than trying to come up with some sort of you know mechanical way inside the game to do that where you don't really know exactly who you're talking to and if they'll even find their way there so TJ what's what's a feature or two that we haven't gone through so far that you would would say maybe stands out or, or, or something to look forward to especially. Uh, one of the things I really 
have been having a lot of fun using is uh, they've made it better a better way to define your team needs in trades. Hmm. Uh, as I was saying, I'm working on my putting in the pre work for trying to win this World Series with the Braves. Uh, and again, I saw one of the needs is I need a I'm going to need a third baseman. At some point, we need to find a third baseman. I can go in, set my team needs, say I want a third baseman that's from this eight, from let's say twenty two to twenty five, who's a power hitter, who's got like he's good, but he could be a superstar, and kind of limit that down. And then the GMs will come looking to me, saying, "Hey, I have Miguel Sant, Miguel Sano. Do you want to work something out? Hey, I have Nolan Arenado. Do you want to work something out?" Uh, that, that could be uh, for someone like me. Who, whenever I try to do a trading, if I want to do a transaction like that, and maybe I don't, especially with minor leagues, I don't know all these players. I don't know their potentials other than if I went in and looked at them individually. I would like personally to get those deals from the other GMs and then evaluate them on that basis instead of trying to put together my own deals just because it's it's time consuming and, and I may not know how to evaluate all the pieces of a potential deal. Um, that's why I don't trade very much in, in console games either. Yeah, or it's like, like for you, you're like, okay, I know I have this guy and I want to get rid of him. You can go and you can, you know, you can shop the player around, see what offers you'll get back. You can do that. That's a perfectly valid way of doing it. But you know in the back of your mind, hey, I need a third baseman. So why not just tell the game, hey, I need a third baseman and have it come to you. Yeah. Just a, a lot easier that way. Yeah. Uh, and I just want to mention one other thing that's uh-huh. uh, pretty huge. Uh, they've added uh, multi-core processing uh, for this year. That sounds very technical. Uh, yeah. Computers, uh, thinking machines, supercomputers. Uh, so when you're doing your simulations, like if you are one of those people that is like, we're going to start in 2016, I'm going to sim 100 years and start then actually. Uh, your season sim speed is going to be, you know, up to sixty percent faster, and and that's, that's huge. <clears throat> that is a big thing to certain players. And Brian, I'm you're one of those guys. Like you're regularly talking about loading times oh, yeah. and how long it takes to do this kind of stuff. This is a big deal. Like yeah. if you're a sim person who wants to sim a week or a month or or uh, you know a season. That makes a big deal. And it's funny, the first time that I saw that this was something that they were working on and then ultimately said, okay, it's going to be in, I was like, okay, you know, that's that's fine. And then you look at the community reaction to that. I think, TJ, that was probably one of the top two or three things that people are the most excited about because, again, a mm-hmm. certain number of the core community uses the Sim engine, which I think really is – you know, Brian, you asked earlier, like, what what really is it about this game that really drives it? And Corey nailed it when he said the fans. Mm-hmm. But I think the reason there are so many fans is because the core engine that drives the baseball simulation, the numbers, is so good. Um, it's just it's stood the test of time, and it's and it's better than you um, know. Uh, it, it's to me, it's the best in the business, um, and that being able to do things twice as fast is a big deal and and that's why i think uh you I know, think, re- realizing now that yeah. that it's such a big deal i didn't think of it when i initially saw it but yeah this is clearly a big thing it's especially for people who that's especially the case for people who play year to year right and that's why it was such a big deal when the likes of mlb the show reduced their loading time so significantly because the last thing you want to do is just be especially when you've played the game before many times is just sitting there with nothing you can do that time really does add up, so I think uh, that that could be really that people who have been playing the game are probably going to notice that more. But it's going to save everybody time, so that's good. Rich, MLB Manager, the mobile version of the game. I don't think it's been officially announced yet, but do you have anything you can say on that at this point? I can say that it's definitely coming out. It's coming out shortly after Out of the Park Baseball launches. Um, it is something we're very excited about as well. It's a premium. App, you know, it's not a free-to-play game that's going to try to microtransaction you to death. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's a premium app, and and you know when you buy it, you you get a full game. You know, the full season, the the teams this year with the accurate rosters and a ton of features um, that makes it in a, a great game to carry in your pocket and and play baseball seasons. Now you can 
purchase, you know, historical seasons as well for additional money, but you buy the game and you get a really great version of out of the park baseball, you know, for your phone for, you know, five bucks, right? Which is, I think, Mm. you know, for traditional game players like you and me, to me, that's a good deal right now. You know, some people like think it's crazy to have a, a mobile game that you actually have to pay for. Right. Yeah. But, you know, that's fine. We get it. You know, there's a certain group of people who um, who really like these kind of games. And, uh, and, uh, and yeah, so MLB Manager 2016 will be coming out this year. We're very excited about it. We're just, you know, because of, of what Out of the Park Baseball is and, and you know, we, we want to make sure that we, we get, uh, you know, we focus on that. And then shortly after that comes out, then we'll have all the, all the, the super detailed info about, about the, uh, the app. But, yeah, it's definitely coming out. It's coming out shortly after Out of the Park Baseball. So pre-orders, yeah. So pre-orders, Rich, you can still do so at a discount, and you get yeah. all other bonuses with that, right? Tell, you know, go through that. What, what's the time frame you have to get a discount on the pre-orders, and then what are you getting with the pre-order? Sure. Well, up until March 8th, if you pre-order the game, you get five bucks off, which is really cool. Um, you get the game four days earlier. So it releases worldwide on March 22nd. But if you pre-order by March 8th, you get the game on March 18th. And you also get a free Steam key. So basically, you're getting two copies of the game. Okay. So um, if you buy it now, you're not buying it through Steam. You're buying it through out of the park directly, but you'll also get a Steam key. So you can have basically two versions of the game. And if you want to gift that Steam key to somebody and not use it yourself, that's cool too. So, um, you know, that's what you get. Um, and also, if you use the, the code PRESS17, you get another 10% off of that. So you can really save yourself uh, a nice amount of money and, uh, you know, support this show and support indie sports game development. It's a, it's a good deal all around. Yeah, awesome. And and how would you keep up with news on the game, Rich, and follow you guys on social media and uh, get you know continue to stay connected as far as uh, streams and, and any news you put out and, and everything you guys are doing out there? Well, TJ runs all of that, so I'll just let him tell you all that good stuff. Yeah, go, TJ. Yeah, you can uh, follow us on Twitter at OOTP Baseball. Uh, also, Facebook.com slash OOTP Baseball. Uh, for all the video stuff on Twitch and YouTube, it's slash OOTP Developments. Uh, and I also highly recommend going to uh, OOTP Developments.com, clicking that community button, and checking out the forums. There's a lot of cool stuff going on in there. Yeah, and Rich, that's where you would pre order it? Yes. Yeah, just go to OOTP Developments.com right at the top of the page. You'll see a big old pre-order the the game that'll bring you to a page where it gives you all the information about it and i just want to follow up on that i mean tj does an amazing job managing the community interacting with people doing the live streams i'm just i'm every time I, i i tune in he's always got interesting people on there he's having conversations about baseball he's live streaming the game he's got interesting matchups all all props to TJ. He does an amazing job. And and even if you're not that in, interested in out of the park baseball, you just like baseball, tune into that stream. You'll have some fun. He, TJ does a great job with that stuff. Yeah. Well, you know what? Hey guys, thanks so much for coming on to the show and talking with me in, in this capacity, which is completely unusual for me. So um, I enjoyed it. I, hopefully, you guys can come on again later this month when we know more about uh, the game and when it's actually out and and some other stuff, uh, promotional stuff you'll be doing. So, hey, thanks again for coming on. That's it for Out of the Park Baseball 17 out later this month. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Press Row Podcast. For Brian Weedye, Pasta Padre, Hit the Pass, and Sporting News, take care until next time.